Hi, I'm Caleb Giddings for GAT Daily, and today's video, we have five safety tips for when you're staying in a hotel. As you can see, I am in a hotel right now. Before the Rona, I traveled a lot for work. I happen to be on the road, and there are some best practices that you can put into place to help keep your physical body safe in a hotel, as well as keep your belongings safe when you're in a hotel. And one of the things obviously that we want to take into account is whether or not you're traveling with firearms, because if you are traveling with firearms, there are other things that you want to do. Obviously, we want to prevent theft of our firearms, but we also want to prevent accidental casual access, which is actually a bigger concern than theft. When we say accidental casual access, what are we talking about? We're talking about somebody like a housekeeper getting a hold of your gun and having a negligent discharge. So what's the first thing that we can do to safeguard our physical body as well as our physical possessions when we're staying in a hotel? Well, the answer to that is don't stay in cheap hotels in crappy parts of town. And I know that sort of seems like a no-brainer, but when you look at incidences of violence, and I mean like actual violence, you know, strong arm break-ins, assaults, that sort of stuff, they usually happen in certain parts of town in hotels that match a certain profile. And I'm not going to mention any brands by name, but generally speaking, if your hotel door just opens up to the outside world, that's probably a clue that it's not the kind of hotel you want to be staying in. It's important to do your research before you go on the road. If you are paying for this hotel out of your own pocket and you're on a certain budget, there are cheaper options that you can get to that are in nicer parts of town. You don't have to stay in a flop house down by the tracks. Now for me, I only stay in Hilton properties and that's because I'm a frequent traveler and I like to get my points. I need points. I like them. I'm a junkie for that sort of thing. My rule of thumb is I won't stay in a town that doesn't have a Hampton Inn in it, which is the entry level hotel on the Hilton property tree. The similar uh, class of hotel would be like a Holiday Inn Express. So if you're in a town and it's not a big enough town or a good enough town to have a Holiday Inn Express or a Hampton Inn in it, maybe just don't stay in that town. And the other reason I won't do that is because Hilton Corporate, while these hotels are franchised, Hilton Corporate has rules about where you can put Hampton Inns and where you can put their properties. So they're not generally speaking going to let a hotel get put in a high crime area. Now it may become a high crime area sometime after the hotel's gone in, but I have stayed in literally hundreds of Hampton Inns across this country in the past 10 years, and I've never stayed in one in an area where I thought, gee, I might have to shoot a crackhead tonight. So rule number one for hotel safety is don't stay in crappy hotels in crappy parts of town. The next thing I'm going to explain to you, number two, has to do with this little card. And it may surprise you that this little card is one of the most powerful tools to prevent casual access and theft from your hotel rooms. This is your do not disturb sign. And to understand why your do not disturb sign is a powerful tool, you have to understand how hotel doors work as well as kind of how hotels work in general. And to do this, I'm going to draw on my past experience as a hotel manager. Yes, that's right. Before I was your third favorite YouTube celebrity, I worked in the hotel business and I worked in housekeeping for some time, as well as in the front office and a whole bunch of other positions. So I know how these things actually work. And the reason why the do not disturb is powerful is entirely because of one, how hotel break-ins happen and two, how modern hotel doors work. So first, how do hotel break-ins happen? So if we're not staying in a flop house down by the railroad tracks where we may have to shoot a crackhead, we can now sort of focus on prever preventing casual theft, preventing casual access to our gun. And most hotel break-ins are done by 
I don't want to say inside jobs because that sounds really sexy for what actually happens where a housekeeper will spot valuable items in a room and then either take them uh, themselves or they will give an unauthorized person access to that room and they will take those valuable items. The reason why a do not disturb is super, super valuable is because when housekeeping goes through your hotel, goes through the hotel every day, there's different housekeepers assigned to each to different sectors of the hotel and they see this on your door and 99.9% .9 of housekeepers even the ones who are inclined to larceny will see that and go sweet I don't have to clean that room today and check it off their list and not give it a second thought and because we're big on things like gray man personal protection on keeping a low profile this allows you to keep the lowest profile possible you put it on your door and 99 percent of housekeepers will just be like cool not my problem now there are some hotels in the wake of the Vegas massacre that will, if you have your D&D &D up for a certain amount of time, they'll knock on your door just to make sure you're like in there and like do a well-being check. The easiest way to manage that is to call the front desk when you get in and just say, hey, I have my D&D &D up, just wanna let you guys know everything's fine in here. And that way they can check off that well-being check off their list. The other reason the DND is powerful is because of the way hotel doors work. And we'll get to this again in some more here as we talk about some of these other measures. But when a hotel employee scans their key card on the door to gain access to that door, the door recognizes that and it sends a signal to the computer where all of these things are programmed saying, hey, key XYZ opened me at timestamp whatever. And this happens anytime a key accesses that door. It doesn't matter if it's your key or a housekeeper's key or a manager's key. Anytime that door gets accessed, it sends a log to the computer. So if your D&D is up and you come back from whatever thing you're doing and you find that your things are out of order or missing, you can call the front desk and say, hey, I had my D&D up. Someone gained access to my room because of X, Y, Z. And that brings us to our third preventive measure. Our third measure is actually very simple and it should be something that's straightforward. Lock your valuables in your suitcase. And again, since we're trying to prevent casual access, we're trying to prevent snatch and grab theft, if somebody is willing to break down your door with a pry bar, they will also have the tools necessary to break open a suitcase and take goodies out of it, or they'll just take the whole suitcase. That's not the sort of criminal we're trying to deter here because truth be told, there isn't a lot of deterrent for that kind of criminal when you're in a hotel. But if you're trying to deter casual theft and casual access, locking your valuables in your suitcase is a very smart thing to do. And you can use any old lock for this. If you have TSA locks on your luggage, use those. They're better than nothing. Again, we're trying to harden our target profile, not make ourselves into a fortress. If you have your own locks that aren't TSA locks, even better, use those. The sort of people that can pick locks and that kind of stuff aren't the sort of people who are doing these crimes. It's all about understanding your threat profile. And the other thing that locking your stuff in your suitcase does is again, it gives you that tamper evidence. If you put your D&D up and then you leave to go about your business for the day and you don't take your gun with you for some reason or you have valuable jewelry or electronics in your room, lock it in your suitcase before you leave. And then when you come back, if the lock's missing off your suitcase, if your suitcase has been opened, if all of these things have happened, then you know something's wrong, you call the front desk and you call the police and you can provide sort of a backtrace. They can pull the report of who's been in and out of your room, figure out where that key went, and it makes the odds of you getting your stuff back a lot better. The other thing that I do, sort of the additional step that I do when I am on the road is when I, once I lock my suitcase and put my stuff in it, I put it in the closet and I shut the closet door. I don't wanna leave visual cues out for people who are larceny minded. All right, tip number four should be very obvious, but do you see my door right now? When you're in your room, <laughs> 
lock your door. And the reason why you want to lock your door, again, is this is more about preventing harm to yourself while you're in your room or something like that, or just, you know, somebody busting in on you when you don't want to be busted in on. The latch will actually help if somebody tries to force entry to the room. And the deadbolt, well, the deadbolt's actually really cool. It goes way into the wall, and there's only one or two keys in the whole hotel that can override that deadbolt. If your deadbolt's thrown, the housekeeper tries to gain access with her key, it'll flash a red light, it'll be like, not allowed. So the housekeeper will know you're in there and that you don't want service for the day. If for some reason they want to override that thing, they have to get the God key. And there's usually only two or three God keys on the property that exist, and then they have to come in and the God key can actually unlock that door. But they only do that in extreme circumstances. I can only think in the, how long did I work for hotels? Like almost 10 years. In the 10 years that I worked for hotels, we only had to God key two doors. And it was one because there was a dead person in there. And I don't remember what the other one was for. But lock your freaking doors and hope they don't have blasters. All right, last but not least on the five ways to protect yourself on the road is don't geotag yourself on social media in your hotel room with pictures of your Apple Watch and your gun and your diamond pendant or whatever it is that you don't want stolen. And I feel like this is a no-brainer, but one of the common things that people in the industry like to do, and I've done it myself, is do my nightstand display where I'll put like my gun and my knife and my pepper spray and all this crap on the nightstand of my hotel and take a photo of it. Uh, that's fine. Don't geotag yourself in the photo. Don't be like, I'm staying at Charlie's Flophouse on 33 and 4th and this is what I keep on my nightstand because that makes you a target. Now, you could successfully argue that the sort of person who would then willingly target you knowing that you have all that stuff might not be the brightest person in the world and you'd be right but to me that falls under the same vein as don't put gun sticker don't put obvious gun stickers on your car like slapping a big old xd sticker right next to your nra life member sticker and your USMC veteran sticker is basically like putting a bilbo billboard on your car that says there's a free gun under my seat in here. So don't do it. Don't make yourself an obvious target. And that's it for our five ways to protect yourself and your stuff when you're in a hotel. I'm Caleb Giddings. Thanks for watching.